Hi everyone, my name is Mariana. I'm majoring in chemical engineering and I'll be doing this final project with Salis, who is also majoring in chemical engineering. So for the topic of this final project, we decided to analyze an important and relevant subject, so we chose the pandemic to be our main focus. All the data and information that we used were based on an article wrote by Chris Heckhaus from the website called Quantitative Economics with Julia. Hello, my name is Salis and I'll begin explaining about our SEIR model. Basically, it is consisted in four different main states, which is how susceptible a person is to get the virus, the number of exposed people to the virus, infected and then removed from the equation. Removed might mean that they did recover or die. Um, the flow of our model is from susceptible to exposed, then to infected and then to removed. Um, the flow works in this way because there might be cases where a person was indeed exposed but did not get infected with the virus, so the model counts on these variables as well. Um, the overall structure to find out the number of people within the equation of the virus is just to sum up, up the term. In the model, the best way to predict correctly the flow of the virus is to make n a big number. So in this way, it is easy to do any approximations without a big percentage error. Now, um, we have three rates that are really important for this model. First one is beta, which is a, a rate uh, in function of time within the equation. Beta is our transmission rate, which can change the number of people that are effectively, effectively exposed to the virus. Um, sigma is the infection rate. With this variable, it's possible to know the rate at which exposed people become infected. And ideally, if this rate is small, the virus is not contagious. Epsilon is the recovery rate. This rate dictates if a person uh, recovers or dies with the virus. And it is related to the removed state. This now is a system of differential equations. With those equations, we can determine the relationship between all different rates and how dangerous the virus can be. Um, so basically, all those four are our initial conditions and they will be determined from a perspective of 100 cases. The initial condition R is uh, the basic reproduction number, which is basically just a regular number to begin the equation. All of the other numbers are related to 100 cases. So I, which is infected rate, is 10, susceptible cases, 20, and exposed uh, 70 cases. So all these numbers are just an estimative of how the numbers will behave as it begins with the level known for the coronavirus outbreak. So first, I'll show how we used Simulink to generate iScope to illustrate how the rates of recovery and infection happen in the pandemic. Here is our Simulink block with the four equations that Tal is talking about, and I'm going to go through them real quick. So the first one represents the number of people that were susceptible to the virus, which is the first one at the top. The second one, letter E, represents the number of people that were exposed to the virus. Letter I represents the number of people who got infected by COVID. And last but not least, the last one is the letter R, the last one from the SEIR model, which represents the number of people who got infected by the virus and either recovered or died. So this is the Simulink block, all the four differential equations are included in the same scope. So if, you, if we click here in this scope, we get this plot with four different lines. So the first one at the bottom, the purple one, uh, represents the people who got infected and either recovered or died. And as we can see, the rate increases as time passes by. The second one, the yellow, is the rate at which people get infected, which increases exponentially as it's shown on the graph. And this is basically what we see every day in the news. Cases of COVID-19 increases every day, unfortunately. The blue one represents people who are susceptible to the virus. Finally, the red one represents the number of people that was exposed to COVID. And as we can see, both of these last two curves that I talked about, the blue and the red ones, are decreasing, which can be ex explained by the fact that people also started to take an extra care of themselves and might have tried to stay at home the most they could. 
So these are the four curves that we obtained from the Simulink block that I just showed you. And just to explain the initial conditions, I know Tal is already talking about that, but the purple one starts at 1.6, the yellow one starts at 10, the blue one starts at 20, and the red one we, we can't see in this scope, but it started at 70, as Tal is talked in the previous slides. So, in conclusion, this system of differential equations can be used to determine the relationship between um, all the infection recovery and transmission rates over time, which is the most important thing in order to control an outbreak. And with this model, it is possible to know how dangerous the disease is, because if the exposed rate and the infection rate are similar, it means that the infection rate is really high. So it means that this outbreak can really get into a lot of people really quick. Um, so that's why it's so important to have a lot of information available because this model, we can change the initial conditions uh, as soon as we know how the virus behaves. So this is why information is so important to the medical community. And overall, this model recreated a situation where the spread of the virus behaved as expected with increases in removed case uh, over a long, long period of time. So this was our project in the coronavirus outbreak uh, using the differential equations to know infection recovery and transmission rates. So I hope you enjoyed and thank you very much.